Come on, let's say amen again. Amen. Thank you, Cyan, for that beautiful music. I want to thank Ebenezer for his contribution, too, with the music that he has rendered. Amen? amen. Praise God for our young people. The church can thrive when the young people are involved. What do you say? Amen. Once again, we want to welcome our church family, our guests, and those who are watching via live stream to the great Pasadena Seventh-day Adventist Church. Beloved, a lot on the plate once again today and wanting to share what the Lord has placed upon my heart. And again, I want to let you know that it came to me first and therefore I simply want to share it because I believe we all want to make heaven. Amen? Amen. Beloved, this thing about Jesus' second coming and also the fact that there are a number of things that are to take place before he comes. We look at the prophecies and we look at all of the things that many people like to just simply think about prophecy. Oh, what's going to happen with the Sunday law? What's going to happen when the close of probation? What's going to happen? Oh, did you see this? Did you see that? Did you see that happen in the news? But the problem is here because if you put the cart before the horse, and that is, if you and I do not have a true, viable, fervent, new birth experience in Christ, that means nothing. We've got to have that. And in order to be an effective witness for God, we must have the power of God in our lives. And therefore, we need to reel back and then think about the simplest things that that, that God has called us to do when it comes to our relationship with him and our fellow brothers and sisters. So important, which brings me to begin this way. This family came together often, but especially on Thanksgiving. And while they were sitting there at the table trying to enjoy their meal, there was a big uproar and contention. They began to argue at the table. The matriarch of the home began to cry and weep before the family, and she wept because her daughter, who has a good husband, she constantly disrespects him, taking his love, taking his kindness for granted, and his kindness for weakness but her favorite word is, thank you, especially when she gets her way. This mother wept because her son has selfish ways, neglecting his good wife and, and children. Mentally now abusing them with his meanness, always having the disposition of putting himself first. But too often... He would use the word thank you when someone did him a favor. Her husband, the father, a good, kind, and hardworking man who gave to their children everything they needed plus some extra. However, it was clear that these two adult children took both the mother and the father for granted, giving them no true respect although they often use the word, thank you. And as a matter of fact, they didn't even appreciate each other. They argued often about self-senseless things and always now wanting to be superior to one another. And within this ingredient, the ingredient of this mother's prayer was this text found here in Philippians 4.6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Let your requests be known unto God. I like what the clear word and how it put, put it. Don't worry so much about everything. When you pray, ask God or for what you need. Don't be afraid to plead with him, but always do so with a grateful heart. You see, God desires for all of us, brothers and sisters, to fulfill our lives to be fulfilled with happiness, and he wants to give us the desires of our hearts according to his will. 
This mother wanted to see her children to show some love and appreciation for their spouses and each other. So let me get down to business. God's message is to us at this time as it's called, Will You Ever Say Thank You? Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, take charge. I'm asking you once again to put your words in my mouth. Only a willing vessel, not worthy. I'm just like everyone else needing to gain this message and live by it. So forgive us for our sins. Pour out your Holy Spirit as never before. Bind the enemy of souls. Take charge right now. This we pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say, Amen. will you ever say thank you? Beloved, in this society in which we live, and even in the church, there are, there are wives who are not loved and appreciated, even though they often hear the word, thank you. There are husbands who are not respected and appreciated. But they always hear the words, thank you. I'm going somewhere, so stay with me. Many children grow up saying thank you. However, their actions do not show that they are grateful for the blessed lives they have been given by God through someone or even their parents. And oftentimes, siblings and even relatives say thank you to each other, but they don't truly mean it. Beloved, it is a fact that some people grow up never verbally or by action say thank you, and that's tragic, real tragic. I remember my mother teaching my sister and I a lot of things as we were growing up. This fella here is from the Birmingham, Alabama area. And I tell you right now, I grew up where I ran around with short pants with no shoes on, running on glass, and it didn't even cut my feet. I had some rough feet. And my mother would always teach my sister and I about how we are to look out for one another. And I'll never forget this. My sister would tell me, tell me sometimes, I'm looking out for you. And I didn't think anything about it until one day she came back with a whole basket full of candy. I said, where did you get all this candy from? She says, I just went around and, and they gave me one. And then I would tell them, my brother wants some. And I wasn't even nowhere around, but she would say, my brother wants some, and she went around and collected all this candy. Oh, what a grateful heart my sister has, and I'm so glad for a sister that I have. But you know what? I'm not like her. I wasn't like her. Because my mother would always teach her, try to teach us to be grateful, to be thankful, and one major point she would make, she wanted us to always share. So one day, my sister came home with one cookie. And my mother stopped her at the door and she says, what are you going to do with that? She says, I'm going to eat it. She says, I want you to do something. I want you to give your brother half. Give your brother half of that cookie. Uh-huh. Give your brother half of that cookie. And I'm thinking, what? We can get the slide to change. Half the cookie? I couldn't believe it. My sister slid over that saucer with that half cookie on it, and I just looked at it. I'm thinking about it. I want, I want, I want the whole cookie. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. I wanted the whole cookie. Why are you giving me the half the cookie? I want the whole thing. I want the whole cookie. I don't want half. I was a little selfish bum. Brothers and sisters, I was unthankful because my sister did not have to give me anything. But my mother was trying to teach us to share. Beloved, whenever my sister and I were giving something by someone, we were trained to say thank you. And as I recall, I never said thank you because it was a half a cookie. But you know what? I believe most of us can attest to that because, you know, we're taught to say thank you. You see, brothers and sisters, our God takes his word, this word, thanksgiving, very serious. Do you believe that? The scripture was read so well by the young lady. Psalms 50, 14, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the most high. I'm going somewhere, so it's going to get so heavy you can't lift it. Beloved, most of us, when we were baptized, we took vows unto the Lord. Did we not? And within those vows, it says, number three, 
Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? That was one of the vows. And a lot of people are thinking, well, when you join a church, you're giving the vows to the church. No, the vows is to God. Amen? Amen. The next one is like this. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? And we normally stand there and say, I do. Beloved, most of us has bowed to the Lord right before our baptism. Yes, we have, that we would surrender to the Spirit of God to live a loving, Christ-centered life. Have we not? And if we truly are thankful to God, we would demonstrate this before our loved ones, within our homes, before our relatives, and before the world. Are you listening? This is why the Bible says in Psalms, 6930, I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. And I hope you caught the meaning by now. Thanksgiving, it means thanks living. Are you with me? It's showing your gratitude by your life lived in relation to others. Oh, yes. Rather than just lip service, it's life service. Notice what it says in Colossians 2, 6 and 7. The word of God says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with what? Why should we do this? My brothers and sisters, get it, and young people, please understand, all, what did I say? All of our prosperity comes from and is allowed by God. All of it. And many of us have the nerve to think that we're doing it. In James 1, 17, we're giving this counsel. Every good and every perfect gift come from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. We are blessed to be a blessing to others, not being selfish, keeping everything to ourselves. I like what it says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. We ought to show thankfulness to God for all of his bountiful blessings that he has given to us. And do we do that? You see, we cannot, and it would be foolish to go around thinking that we prospered ourselves. We did it. I did it, and God had nothing to do with it. Do you think you received that good job on your own smarts and ingenuity? Do you? Do you think you got that promotion or raise on the job by your smarts? Did you think you received that huge business deal because you're all that? What about that nice or new or used car, huh? That house or that apartment you stay in, those clothes, those shoes, that check that came in the mail that you did not expect to receive, huh? Did you think that you got that good wife on your own? How you doing, honey? (laughs) Huh? That good husband? Those respectful, responsible children, and even when they're not so responsible, huh? The breath that we take each and every moment of the day, you and I must never forget, brothers and sisters, we are blessed by the best. And it's time to say thank you. And I'm going to tell you how later on. Not lip service, but life service. This is why we as God's people and a church ought to be grateful and we must remember we are blessed to be a blessing to others. See, that's the way my sister thought when she came with that cookie and broke it in half and slid it over to me. We ought to share the blessings of God gives to us with others who are in need. Some of us have five cars and only can drive one. Notice what the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 4.15. It gives us this counsel. For all things, amen? 
for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. I want to move to the clear word because it makes it even plainer. So whatever we do is for your sakes, not ours. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, it overflows in still greater thanksgiving to his glory. His glory, not ours. Yes, God desires us to be a blessing to others. How many of us can truly say that we are a blessing to others? How many of us are always giving rather than receiving? But you know what? But like I was with my sisters, I wanted the whole cookie once again. I still want that cookie. <laughs> Not realizing nor thinking about the fact that my sister was giving me half of what could have been considered all hers. But she's very loving and very giving. I've learned that today. Amen. Notice what the word of God says in Ezekiel 33, 30 and 31. You may have to turn there just on the screen for your notes. It says, also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak to another, every one to his brother, saying, come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Here it is. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Whoa. The Lord is coming strong here. God says, these are my people who are being blessed daily by my hand. Yes, but they refuse to give me thanksgiving by following my counsel. Have mercy. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah 29, 13, the word of God gives us this counsel. Wherefore the Lord says, for as much these people draw near with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but they're, they're, they have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. But notice what God says. God didn't change from the Old Testament times to the New Testament times. This is why he repeated himself in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 15. These people draw up nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If you were here last week and the week before, you've seen this scripture three times. Why are we doing this? Because we're asking God. We're asking God to, 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 to help us to become truly, truly born again. Thank you, sir. We want to become new, newly, new birth and on fire, fervent, new birth, born again Christians in God. And it's time for us to pay attention to the scriptures that relay and let us know that we are just, just, Faking it, it's time to be serious about this thing. And God says, wow, believe it or not, the Lord is talking to his church today. Most today honor God with their mouth, but their life and commitment to him says just the opposite. It is time, we're living in the last days, that we need to seriously give God our whole heart. Notice what he says for us, that he wants us, that he desires for us in 1 Peter 3.10. The word of God gives this counsel for he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that speak no guile. God says, come clean. God simply says, be a people who speak no deceit. Be for real. You say you're a child of God. Live it. Be real by choice and face value in your thanksgiving. When you are being real with God, you are saying to God, thank you for what you've done to me, for me. You see, my brothers and sisters, my intent is not to discourage anybody today. No, 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 no. We're not going to end on that note because I believe there are plenty of Nathaniels in the congregation today. Amen? Notice what the Word of God says in John 1, talking about Nathaniel. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said unto him, said unto him Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile, no deceit, and the clear word puts it this way. So Nathaniel followed Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel, he said, here's a true Israelite. There is nothing dishonest about him. Come join us. Can God say that about all of us today? Here's a true child of God that truly represents me. And because they're doing that, they are saying, thank you. Now let me turn the corner right here. Beloved, when the word of God proclaims a story in the Bible, it's not just for form and fashion. It's not just form and fashion. 
and has a great meaning for our day today. Notice what the Bible says in Luke chapter 17, looking at verses 11 through 19. And here's the story. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. Where did he go? That he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. They were all messed up. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And then one of them came back. And when he saw that he was healed, turned back and, and with a loud voice glorified God. He thanked God. And he fell down on, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but were there, where are the other nine? And they are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Just this one came back. And he said unto him, arise and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now here's the point. My brothers and sisters, here's a lesson for us all. The lepers were so corrupted by disease that they had been restricted from society lest they should contaminate others. Their limits had been prescribed by the authorities. Now Jesus comes within their sight and in their great suffering they cry unto him who alone has the power to relieve them. Jesus now bids them show themselves to the priests. They have faith to start on their way believing in the power of Christ to heal them completely. And as they go on their way, they realize that the horrible disease, disease has now left them, but only one has feelings of gratitude. Only one feels his deep indebtedness to Christ for this great work done for him. This one returns now praising God. I want you to get this. Stay with me. And in the greatest humiliation, he falls at the feet of Christ. He now acknowledges with thankfulness the work that Christ did for him. This man was a stranger, a Samaritan. The other nine were Jews. Wow. The Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. Children of the living God, the story is very significant right here. None of the church members came back to thank Christ. Only the one who was not a member, but he was from the community. Uh-oh. You see, the life-healing gospel truths that you and I have been hearing for years within this church, unfortunately, has gone unappreciated by many professed people of God. There are many Samaritans in this community. Oh, yeah. And in the community in which we live, who, if they heard the true healing gospel that many within the walls take so lightly, they will say thank you by giving their lives to Jesus. You see, for the sake of this one man who would make a right use of the blessings of health, Jesus healed the whole ten. Look how great God is. You see, God is not only good, he's merciful. Can I get a witness? Even though the nine passed on without appreciation, appreciating the work that was done and rendered no grateful thanks to Jesus for doing the work, guess what? How many of us are still doing the same thing? The Lord works continually to benefit all of us. We're sitting pretty. There's places in this world where people are worshiping under a tree, sitting on a stump in the rain. We are blessed. He is ever imparting to us his bounties. He raises up the sick from beds of the languishing. Yes, he does. He delivers men from peril, which they do not see. I thank God. He commissions heavenly angels to save them from calamity. Let me tell you now, if we could see with our spiritual eye, it would shock us into our senses to know that our guardian angel and many others are fighting off demons trying to take our lives every second of the day. Let me back that up. Every moment of the day. And are we saying thank you about how we carry ourselves? How we represent Christ? 
He commissions the heavenly angels to save them from calamity, to guard them from the pestilence that walketh in darkness and the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Yes. But many of our hearts are unimpressed. He has given all the riches of heaven to redeem them, and yet they are unmindful of his great love. And in their ingratitude, they close their hearts against the grace of God. Every time the appeal is made, I'll do it next week. And like the heath in the desert, they know not when the good cometh and their souls inhabit the parched places of the wilderness. They don't realize they're in a bad way. And again, when the ten lepers were cleansed, brothers and sisters, only one returned to find Jesus and give him glory. Let none of us be like the unthinking nine, oh no, 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 whose hearts were untouched by the mercy of God. Every time we get in a car and drive from one point to the next, we ought to say thank you. And let me give you another point of view right now. Leprosy in this story represents sin. Sin. Have not Jesus died for all of our sins? One amen? Two? Huh? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have the leprosy of sin. You see, because of that leprosy of sin, brothers and sisters, Jesus went to the cross. Oh, yes, he went to the cross. Oh, yes, he did. He did not have to go to the cross, but he did it for you and I. He let them beat him mercilessly, shedding the blood. We all are filled with leprosy of sin, and we need a redeemer. He came to redeem us. Look how we treat him, though, when we know what he says in his word, and yet we fail to follow they beat him. They laid him on his back and, and, and driven, drove those nails through his hands, through his feet, thrust his side with the spear. Oh, look what they've done to the Savior. He did this for you and I. Do we care? Do we really care? Or do we only want to talk about the mark of the beast? Think about it. Huh? It's by the life we live and the love we give. Our Savior, he did not have to do that. Drag, dragging up that heavy cross, which is told in history, over 300 pounds. Carrying the weight of the world's sin on his back, being whipped, being nailed, driven through his flesh. To die on the cross that only we deserve. And yet, many of us by our lives, we are not saying thank you. And the question comes, will you ever say thank you? Beloved, I know that there are some of you under the sound of my voice who truly say thank you to Jesus every day. It's not one-sided. I get that. Because you have a complete surrender to God every day, and that's your walk with God. Praise God. But there are too many left over who are not. And there are some who have never truly said thank you to Jesus by surrendering their lives completely to Jesus and for his service. Not just verbal words, it's saying it by action. So I'm glad now that our mother's, a weeping mother's prayer do not go up in vain. Because that mother says, thank you. We're moving into the Thanksgiving season. Oh yeah, we're here now. You see this family with a lot of issues, brothers and sisters. In God's own way, he answered this mother's prayers, the family's prayers. Uh-huh. Yes, he did. This daughter, who constantly disrespected her husband, found the courage to ask him for forgiveness after a year of separation. Don't stop praying. And during this time, she learned and realized what kind of a man she really had. Yes, he was a good man. How many of us abusing good men? good women that God has placed in our lives. See, we need to understand something here. You and I could have been born during the Holocaust. You and I could have been born during the slavery time. You and I could have been born in some rough times, but God saw fit to allow us to be born in this time, and we never say thank you. So this husband accepted her back because he remembered what God had done for him on the cross. 
<laughs> he truly said, thank you. Then the son, with his selfish ways, who, who neglected his good wife and his children, mentally abusing them with this meanness. Oh, man. And this fellow finally came around to the reality of his ways, but not until he spent 18 months in jail. God has to do something. Hanging out with the wrong crowd, which gave him the two time to reflect and realize how blessed he was with a good wife and children. See, when you say, Lord, save me, you don't know what it's going to take. So that's why I would admonish all of us to never say, Lord, humble me. You don't know what it's going to take. You got sense enough to read his word. You got sense enough to follow and surrender your will to his will and word. You'll be all right. Some of us are going to go through things that we don't unnecessarily that we don't have to go through. If we say thank you early enough, we won't have to go through it. Are you listening? And in this story, it could be said that these two young adults were out of control because they were given bountiful blessings. Some of us take things for granted. And it was taken for granted until they had no respect, no appreciation for anybody, including their parents. Have mercy. And now today, both of them pray for each other and both of their families worship together at church. Praise God. True story. Prayer works. That's why I keep constantly pushing prayer meeting at this church. Amen. Our church, can you relate to this? How many of us have it so good, we are comfortable in this life, and we take our God, our Father, some of our relatives and families for granted? We have it good. Think about it. Huh? Will you ever say thank you? By forgiving yourself and others who have wronged you. And you know, that, that nature, if you're not born again, you want to hurt somebody when you're wronged. You can't truly say thank you unless you truly appreciate what Christ has done and are doing for you in your daily life. So again, will you ever say thank you? You see, the national holiday, Thanksgiving, will be celebrated in five days, November 28th. And at this season of the year, there are many who naturally turn their thoughts toward deeds of charity. And they give a lot of Happy Thanksgiving greetings. We will hear the pleasant Thanksgiving greetings, the laughter, the smiles, and we will eat lots of food. Am I right or wrong? You should say amen loud on the food part. <laughs> However, do we really mean it? Do we really appreciate one another? Life action. You see, every human being and body, soul, and spirit is the property of God. Think about that. Don't miss that. Christ died to redeem all. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. So stop tripping on somebody that you just don't like. If you're going to make heaven, you better wrap your arms around him and give him a hug. Come on and say amen. <laughs> See, when you do that, you're saying thank you for what Jesus did. You see, nothing can be more offensive to God than for men through religious bigotry to bring suffering upon those who are the purchase of the Savior's blood. Huh? Let's show true thankfulness for one another all year long, not just at Thanksgiving around that table. You're just saying thank you for the food. Huh? And not just on Thanksgiving. And let's do some thanks living. Are you with me? In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, the word of God gives us this counsel. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now as I finally close as the music plays. Someone here today has never given Jesus their whole heart. For real. For real. Thank you, my brother. Are you appreciative of the daily blessings he gives? Think about it. The plan of salvation for you and how he has delivered you. And the question comes, will you ever say thank you? He's delivered us from the shackles of sin, brothers and sisters. Oh, yes. The sin. Leprosy. Leprosy. Yes. Yes, he delivered us. And the best way you and I can say thank you is by giving Jesus our heart 
completely, not some of it, not a corner of it, but all of it. Many of us have heard appeals at the sermon if they were given appeal. And many of us do not respond. And yet, like I said last week, somebody is hearing this appeal for the last time. An appeal to give your heart completely to Jesus. You see, there are too many of us, even in the household of faith, who's, new, who's really never really said thank you to God because a true thank you to God is a complete, full surrender to God for what he's done. Week after week, month after month, year after year, the proclamation of the gospel is made, and, 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 and guess what? When the appeal is made... Oh, I'll do it next week. I'm not ready yet. I got to get myself together before I, 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 I go to church, before I study the word of God. I'm not worthy to do that. Look, come as you are. Jesus will fix you and bring you to what he will make you to be, what he wants you to be. And the question, once again, the title of the message, will you ever say thank you? And what I'm driving at right now, brothers and sisters and church family, is that whether or not you truly surrendered all to Jesus, not feeling comfortable because your name is on the church rolls. You see, I want my name in heaven. <laughs> yeah, this is the gateway to heaven, but the one that's written in the book in heaven, the book of life, <laughs> on that page, I want it there. And the only way you and I are going to get it there is we, if we ever say thank you for real. So let me give you the opportunity. How many of you, if you truly can say in your heart that you've said thankful, thank you to Jesus for real because you know you have surrendered your heart to Jesus in everything you know that he's called your life to be and you know you've done that and you truly can say you've said thank you already. I'd like for you to stand. You know you've done it already. You know you've done it already. And everything. You, 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 you've given yourself a living sacrifice. You don't play games with God. You're dead serious. I said, thank you. See, God wants to see your life saying, thank you. Thank you. Not lip service, but life service. And there are those who have not truly given their heart to Jesus. And I'm going to pray for those of you who are standing that you will hold fast that you have, that no man take your crown. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast. We're going to talk about the seven last plagues. We're going to talk about global warming and, and, and all of these things that's plaguing this earth that is ushering in the end times. But until we get this one right, a true viable relationship with Jesus, it matters more than that because there'll be a lot of people that are scholars in that that's going to make hell. So will you ever say thank you? Now, there's individuals under the sound of my voice who have not truly said thank you. You might be still sitting in your seat and you want to declare today, Lord, I want to say thank you to you today because I'm going to give you my whole heart right now. I'm going to say thank you because this signifies that I'm surrendering all. I'm giving you my all in all, my whole heart, not a corner, the whole heart, not a half, the whole heart. You want to say thank you to Jesus today? I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have not truly said thank you by the life you live. Everybody. What did I say? That raise your hand. I want you to come front. Come up front. I want to pray for you. Come on now. Come on now. You want to say thank you for real now. You coming clean. You, 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 you giving all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I owe. I'm coming. I'm coming. Even if you're in the balcony, we'll make time for you. Come on now. We're still on time. Time to say thank you. Thank you for what he's done. Will you ever say thank you? 
it's got to be a life lived before God that really speaks volumes that you are saying, thank you, thank you. So when you leave this place, you will never turn your back on God and you will not go back playing footsies with the devil. You're still going to be steadfast and true. Everything you say, everything you do is going to say thank you to Jesus. Because our actions, brothers and sisters, I tell you right now, truly say what we really mean in our relationships with God. When we're at odds with somebody and we like being at odds with somebody. We got people that don't want people to come to the church because they don't like them. You got people that says, I don't want to go to the church because somebody's at this church. Will you ever say thank you? Because this is an army that's going through, brothers and sisters, and God is going to do something to explode the work here in this vineyard. And he needs people enveloped with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we will not get it unless we all say thank you by the life we live and the love we give. There may be somebody under the sound of my voice who want to take Bible studies in preparation for baptism. If that's your testimony, please raise your hand. We would like for you to come forward. We want to pray for you. Amen? Is there one? What about returning from a far country like the prodigal son? We'll treat you, and we ought to be treating anyone as if they've never left. Is that your testimony? Raise your hand. And even when the prayer is prayed to conclude the service, the appeal is still open. So see me or one of the elders. We'll take care of you. I want you to pray for yourselves. Pray for your families that you represent. And pray and ask God to help you where you're weak. Help you where you have unbelief. And to help you as you live this life, to always say thank you for how you relate to him and your fellow man. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God of heaven, your children has come forth. Your children have stood. And even those who are sitting because they're still undecided, please, oh God, touch their hearts in a very special way and Give them no rest nor peace until they decide for you. God of heaven, we are in the last days. There's last day events that are taking place. And as we move from this week to the next, if it be thine will, the message will be stand. And we're going to talk about the end times. But we got to get this right this week. Will we say thank you? So we're asking, oh God, that you will bless each and every person here with the petitions that they have in their hearts. Help them, Lord, where they're weak. Give them strength, oh God. Where unbelief wants to take charge, give them belief. Oh God of heaven, do what you do best. Rain down your Holy Spirit upon this place. We're asking now that you forgive us for our sins, trespasses, and iniquities. Help us, oh God, where we cannot help ourselves. Give us the power to simply choose you and always say thank you by the life we live and the love we give, showing appreciation for what you've done for us for our salvation and realizing that you've done the same for everybody on the top side of this earth, that we need not have any enemies at all because you have died for all. And let us continue to fast and pray. Let us fill the prayer meetings that take place in the afternoon and after service and on Wednesday night. Let us fill this place with prayer that your power may rain down. And we're asking, oh God, that you would do what you do best, and that is to save each and every one of us. Now you have permission to do whatever it takes to save us, even from ourselves. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, and those who are still in the valley of decision, please touch their hearts to simply say thank you and surrender their will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering all the petitions coming forth and standing. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. 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 You may return to your seats. For those who are standing, please remain standing for the closing hymn.